This is Sherman uh, with for Griffin Games and Comics, and today I'm going to be talking about the Pathfinder Adventure card game. Um, Paizo has recently announced their Pathfinder Society Adventure Card Guild, which is going to be an organized play program they're putting together for the Adventure Card Game. Um, I will talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but first I wanted to kind of explain some of the basic rules. Okay, so to give you a basic idea, this is a uh, cooperative card game, and the entire point is to play through a number of um, linked scenarios where you are slowly building your character, kind of like in a traditional role-playing game, except there's not any role-playing in this. This is just a just a card game, but it's a pretty cool card game. Um, so let's see. Uh, again, there are linked scenarios, so they have um, a number of scenarios that are, uh, comprise an adventure, which ultimately comprise an adventure path. And altogether, those are several nights of play. Um, the base game here has um, three linked scenarios in it, um, and the first expansion has another five, I believe. So you you end up with a, quite a number of scenarios over the course of these uh, these adventure decks. Over each scenario, you're going to be defeating monsters, um, going through uh, like traps, things like that, um, finding equipment, finding allies, all these different variety of things that happen in these different locations. Um, each scenario I've got laid out here. So this is the uh, this is the first um, first scenario in the uh, burnt offerings adventure path. It's the attack on Sandpoint, and so each scenario will have a number of locations that you have to adventure through. There are there are monsters. There are um, Barriers, weapons, spells you can find, things like that. Al even allies and things that you pick up over the course of the adventure. Um, your characters um, will go to the various locations and encounter these cards. So a typical turn will look like um, moving your character to a location and then just encountering that, that first card on that deck. And that can, again, be a, a monster that you fight, or it could just be a piece of equipment that you get to try and try and uh, locate. A lot of the game revolves around defeating monsters. So these guys, you've got combat checks uh, to defeat them, so that means the combat check allows you to use a variety of things. So you can be using a spell, you can be using a, a, a weapon, um, and you're just trying to beat that number. So you can only use one card of each type in the game. So there are a variety of card types. Um, they fall along the lines of items, uh, things like you could use a blast stone to try and blow somebody up, or just a, uh, a bow or a sword, which would be a weapon. Um, there are uh, allies, so maybe you have an ally like a guard or something who can help you in a fight. And uh, then there's blessings, and that's another big part of the game. But blessings are, they typically just give you another die to, to throw on to, onto that roll. So, uh, each scenario is typically follows a similar uh, design theory, and that is you are trying to locate a villain who has secreted himself in one of these locations. Um, so you're going to go through these locations searching for this villain, um, but you have to seal every location before you can actually defeat the villain. If, if any of the locations are not sealed, when you find and defeat the villain, he'll just run away and hide in one of those other locations. So ultimately you're going to have to go through most of these decks to, to, to complete a scenario successfully. Okay, so Valorous defeats the Goblin Raider here. Kill the Goblin Raider, and he would then have to use the, or complete the win closing. If he does that, that would then be closed. Let's say he found Rip Nugget here, Rip Nugget and Stickfoot, um, but this location was still open. Rip Nugget could escape over here, even if he killed him. Um, he'd still get to close that. And then he could find either one. So if the Goblin Raider happened to be found first, he could kill the Goblin Raider close the location, and Rip Nugget and Stickfoot would be the only card left in that deck. If he found him first and defeated him, or failed to defeat him, he'd hide back into this deck. Um, either way, eventually, he would narrow it down by closing all the locations and ultimately, hopefully, kill Rip Nugget. Um, most of these scenarios, well all of them, have some kind of uh, advancement that you get after the after the scenario. So it'll either be, you'll either upgrade your character so they'll become better at fighting or spell casting or whatever, or perhaps you just find some additional equipment. Um, the, the kind of the, the best you can hope for is adding another card to your deck. Your, your deck is a very um, important part of your character because the deck also represents your character's hit points. So once your character deck is depleted completely, if you have to draw a card and you can't, your character actually dies. and. Um, they are very, 
Pathfinder's Adventure card game is very much about no second chances. So all your choices count, and if a character dies, you're building a new character. Um, but assuming that doesn't happen, you get to advance your character. And what that means is you've, you've, uh, you're adding additional uh, cards or bonus beats or just additional power to your character in some way. And a lot of your character upgrade actually comes from finding things during the scenarios, and then at the end of the adventure or the scenario, rebuilding your character deck. So you're actually going to end up with more cards in your deck than you started with it at the end of each game, but you have to, you have to trim that back down to your original number. So um, each, each character has a certain amount of each type of gear that they can have. So they have a certain number of allies, a certain number of weapons in their deck. So if you found a bunch of extra weapons, you'll have to bring it back down to that, that initial starting point. Uh, but hopefully you found some better stuff, so you'll get to swap out some of your old equipment and get new, better equipment. Um, so that's, that's the main way the characters advance, and the characters advance through all the scenarios. You, you ultimately end up with a character that looks much different than your starting character, um, but the flavor of the character stays the same. They all have their own special, unique abilities that are, you, you know, really give them a distinct um, flavor from the other characters. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the Pathfinder Society Adventure Card Guild. So this is uh, Paizo's new um, organized play Plan. And what this means is that every week you're going to be able to come into the store and sit down with some other people and play through a game. And there are going to be uh, additional promos that you can only get at the store. So it's a, it's a cool chance to meet some new people and find some new gear. Um, details on all this are a little bit sketchy at the moment, but I do know that you will be getting um, the all you need to do to come in and play is by yourself a character deck and that the character decks are different from the Rise of the Rune Lord. They're not going to have the characters in the in the next expansion which is the Skull and Shackles Adventure Path. So that's going to be a whole brand new set of cards. Uh, but in Skull and Shackles uh, there won't be characters in there. There's just going to be uh, the adventures. So you're going to you're gonna, same thing, start with your, your simple scenarios and basic cards and then each adventure deck is going to add on a bunch of new monsters, a bunch of new cool equipment, um, so that that you'll see get to see those those awesome uh, items later on in the game. Um, the character decks are going to have uh, three characters in each of them. So if you buy the bard deck, you're actually going to have a, a choice of three different bards that you can use in the game. And that is the uh, kind of the, what we know so far about the uh, Pathfinder Society Adventure Card Guild. So hopefully you'll join us for that. So thank you for, again for watching. This is Sherman with Griffin Games and Comics. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to stop by the store and we'll get you signed up for the uh, Skull and Shackles Adventure Card Game. Um, we look forward to getting this started on Tuesdays and we will have all that information in store. Just come in and chat with us. Thanks for watching.